Hello, I guess I'll to blah or of good three shasket in program like BBC Alba had all good three skill can voronic and in sales sports in the halibut. It's Michelle on a Valentine. I guess I'm a toilet to read a well clear Nelson and Rash call rooms in studio. I clear the art of girl in a strathic light sirens. I guess I can ball in Alba. I program the Heike Noch, Clinician will study the Technicoch in the sirens. Karen Atkinson, since Skipper Eke Rash a far pest reach in Skippy and a shard and some Super League ball in. As you bring like click at their golf, Megan Briggs, see a glue set for ear skipper, your skipper club golf, Hill McCollum, and now Blaine. Could you actually laugh at their Nashton and Banna Chenagorn, Biaki Kishin, at a far to high explores, and in Lave Break and Eoch? Claire, welcome back to 360. Great to be back. Well, you're back and Netball's also back. You must be delighted. <laughs> yeah, well, we've got the Super League back, which is absolutely incredible because um, it was devastating to suspend it in March last year, just as the uh, pandemic hit. Uh, and it's been a lot of hard work to get to this point now. You know, not only were our players off court for a significant amount of time, but that return to training was quite significant. We had to work with the government, with chief medical officers, with our colleagues in England and the Super League to make sure that we had safe return to training programs for all of our athletes who had been doing little bits at home. Then we had to find access to, to facilities to train in. And we were one of the later teams to be able to get back and get our players on court. We had a little bit of a pre-season um, and then coming into the new year, I don't think any of us expected to hit probably in an even worse state of the pandemic. Um, and so for you know a long time, we were really unsure as to would we be able to get our sport restarted. Of course, you know, running alongside all of this as well as the actual delivery of the league. So we were delighted to be able to, to get Wakefield and Copper Box as two central venues. We're playing in a very, very safe uh, behind closed doors environment. And for the first time ever, we have Sky covering every single game through linear TV and, uh, and uh, streaming. So it's been a massive amount of work. And I think the hard work's only just started for our players who are trying to balance the demands of traveling and playing and competing, but also managing their own lives but the reception to us coming back has been huge and I think it'll be a real defining moment for our sport. Well, it has been it's such amazing news for the Super League, for Strathclyde Sirens, for yourself and all of your team who have worked so hard to make this happen. But I think before, the, the last time you were on, it, it had been stagnant for so long and other sports were up and running. How did you get to that point where you could the, the league could restart and how much did you have to fight for that? But I mean, I can imagine there's so many different people you'd have to go through to get to that point? Well, elite sport has all, always operated under an exemption. So before, um, you know, domestic sports, so that our clubs, our junior clubs, our senior clubs and school clubs, they haven't been able to restart and that hasn't changed. And at the moment, we're working with the government and Sports Scotland to understand what the roadmap is and to see how we fit into that. And that will be a slow restart for us um, because it, it will likely be outside, it will likely be young people to start and it will likely be um, a low contact or no contact version of the sport. But the elite exemptions has allowed us to get back into training and we have had funding through DCMS in England England, and we've had some funding here in sports uh, from Sports Scotland to allow our clubs, the pro side, to restart. That lifeline has been critical to us. And so there are huge challenges, as I've, I've outlined, in terms of training. There are um, injuries that people are experiencing, players at the moment, because they've been off court for so long. We've had to move from 15 minute quarters to 12 minute quarters. So huge complexities of decision making and planning has has gone into getting the Super League up and running. I mean, it looks fantastic, but there's huge work. But that doesn't mean the whole sport has started and we still have challenges here at Netball Scotland to make sure we protect every element of the game across the pathway. Well, how are your players finding life now? I mean, they're still working full time. They've got all these different training protocols. And then, as you mentioned, these central venues where the games are taking place, but they're down south and it's so much traveling. Yeah, I, well, I, I, we've had three wins out of four and our first game, you know, which we didn't win, we, we played the league champs and we took them for a, a, a good, good half of the game. So I, I think the, the bus journey back definitely has felt quite good for them. But you're right. And 
And because we're semi-pro, we've got real different dynamics. So we've got girls who are students who are managing their studies and their training. Um, our students are at University of Strathclyde. We have a strategic partnership with them. So there's a huge support system in there to help them. We've got girls who are full-time optometrists and lawyers, uh, teachers. So the, they are juggling just what every single one of us is doing, trying to get through a day, understand the regulations and the protocols, but also fit in a full-time training and competition program and I think they're utterly remarkable for doing that and it's a story that needs to be told more because they're not full-time they're not paid six figures or even huge salaries to be able to just focus on what they do they're doing them both and they're doing them really well and they're doing them following the most stringent protocols at the moment but we do have some full-time athletes and we were lucky enough we had an injury with uh, our South Africa and I, I think a that was probably when I spoke to you last, but we managed to bring in a superb replacement to Erev Nkumbu from Malawi. Uh, she joined us in January and, um, and yeah, I mean, it's, she's, she's joined in a pandemic and you can't really go out and see much, but she's experienced snow for the first time and she's had her 30th birthday here. So the girls, they're just professional. Um, they are so connected as a team and they support one another and they're going through it together, but they also know that they're privileged, they're privileged to be able to play their sport at this moment in time, to have this visibility, and they are inspiring so many people. And there are people who are really struggling at the moment, who when they see women, when they see female athletes and netballers on the TV, it, it makes them feel good and happy and hopeful. And so that is what is fueling our players and our coaching team right now. Great, well, it's so good to have you back. Great to be back. <laughs> And Strathclyde Sirens are Tosha Guma and the Super League Balleen, the Bunic Trig and the Kehar Gemke Nachke Huka Show. As she never be bringing Rishin Sturiki Technical Kachke, Karen Atkinson. A Joey season fichet fichet in Vitality Netball Super League, a vita de Hudje Vuvoi Kovdenik Giak. Harosturicher Technikach Akne Strathclyde Sidens Karen Atkinson, Buloch Kinchok Rotes and fichet fichet to Hun Dollar Horshagok Maravatu. I think the the um, Super League board and the and the team who work behind the Super League were definitely putting in a lot of work to try and mitigate all the risks and. Um, just get this hub um, league off the ground to make it as safe as possible. But I think we all knew um, the virus was in um, a pretty terrible state in January. So although there was an estimated start date, we didn't necessarily know whether it was going to go ahead. So, um, but it, you know, we hold our hat off to the league. They pulled out all the stops. They've created um, a good testing regime to try and mitigate people going to the venue with COVID. Lots of sanitization at the venue. The venue's really well thought out. Um, um, and because it's in one, um, in just one venue, now it can be televised, which is great. Get a halisachig skillen agus doyan chlichet dyn an unian a rutan as cwtrymichet da skip a chochi sy'n bi. Le Covid, unian a dwl lang a smoa se fi cwma smach e safolchus nyn chlichet dyn. I think that's the most difficult piece as coaches because actually we as coaches and a management team are at far less risk than the players so we're always socially distant with masks on when we're coaching so you know we're not we're not in risk of having to self isolate as a result of a positive case within the environment as long as we stick to the protocols so that was the most difficult thing for us as coaches um, and the team managers is making the players safe making them understand their responsibility to the other players within the team um, and what that what they were doing outside of the netball environment. You know, we had many kind of Zoom medical meetings um, quite early on when we were returning to training back in September, October. Um, and I think the girls could really sense the level of responsibility that they had. So um, we had to look at all the individual players' circumstances, you know, were, were they going to work, what kind of work, were they still studying? Um, and then obviously with lockdown, that's probably made things a little bit easier that actually there's not too much that they can be doing outside of um, the current regulations and outside of training. And then there's the extra layer of testing um, that's now been put in. So I think step by step, it's got even safer and the players understand their responsibility. So thankfully, we haven't had to pull anybody in line um, so far. 
le tri gemich in idem buone ge gemacht se hiet keet ha karen i de doi glan le kemer han seiden se tage ge gentesen se ags le schnurt es haie dechking ans nenienen yeah we're, we're feeling really good i think um what we've been trying to work on during the pre-season and you know there's you know there's a number of coaches that are working with the players at the moment myself uh, Leslie McDonald Claire Maxwell and Rachel Kremen up here um, is just really focusing on their basics so you know wherever our game plan is they're going to do it to the best of their ability and we're going to um, make sure we're giving them really clear information on what they can improve and how they can do it better and areas to develop and and we've kept it quite simple and they're really thriving on that they understand what their job is what their role is um, and they understand that if something doesn't happen quite as they planned that's fine it's their behaviors and their work ethic and everything that comes around that the mentality of the players is starting to shift that they're, and they're starting to believe that they can take these games and they can run teams really hard um, and that's what we want to keep taking into the rest of the season hi the record the karen hain of us kun and skip of one pengi ekne gemichen listen a huring pri av coach lesley on or khashul Yeah, I'm really enjoying it so far. You know, the girls are really receptive to what you're trying to um, teach them and coach them, and we've been really honest with the players about, you know, what the different coaches, what the ro- what our roles are, what who they come to for certain bits of information, what we'll be responsible for, for and I think that's helped them feel settled in a in a slightly unusual coaching situation because you'd normally have your head coach up here um every single session. Um and as coaches we're communicating often through email, WhatsApp, Zoom calls, etc. So I think the new digital kind of um explosion that's happened during COVID is is making it a little bit easier. So um Yeah, I'm enjoying it because they're a great great group of girls to work with and they want to get better and that's all you can ask for. Ha Karen is Viren Mache Suring Skipper and Sidon the Colonel. A high tick and chain over her rope is on to be in Skipper Alapanok turn and far push. I think at the minute the probably the biggest barrier for them to to keep pushing all the way to the top is is their is the pathway and the exposure that they have to the competitive match play that the English players have on a on a regular basis when they're much younger. So as they come through into this um into the senior squad into the siren squad, they've not got that same base of competitive match play that these guys here. So uh, one of our jobs as a you know myself as technical director and working with Tamsin Greenway the new national coach is to look at the competition structure that we have up here and try and find more competitive opportunities so that at the same time as building that the the basics and their ability to stick to game plan we've just got more depth coming through and more competition for places and and I think that'll start to drive their standards further but they're certainly not far off they've got the work ethic and they've got the 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 willingness to get better we've just got to show them how and put the program in place that's going to help them There's a lot still to be done, you know, there's a lot of different language and mindset changes to have, you know, sometimes we there's momentum shifts in games and some of the girls might refer to it as oh um you know were we going to revert, you know, is that classic sirens type type of language and we're trying to change that and go no 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 that's not you know that's not, that's not us that's what not what we're here for we're going to you know we're going to stop that kind of language even if it's just very unconscious as they're saying it so because it can filter down to your younger players who then come in with that kind of um opinion so we want them to understand that yes we have to build their skill set their technical ability so that they can compete with the with the teams at the top but actually on any given day as long as we play to our maximum and force them to play below par winning is possible and they need to understand that. So, um we can definitely see shifts in it. Um and we, you know, Tams and Greenways working on the next layer of Scottish athletes as well to see if we can get them more physically fitter, robust um and do some of the preparation work so that they can start to step in um to that senior level. I think in 5 years time we'd like to be competing in the top 4 on a regular basis. Um so you know this season it is it is another building season we would have liked to have had the whole of last season to have done that. It's another building season we're going to um try and win as many matches as we possibly can and finish in the table as high as we can. Um but we're not kind of so 
cocky and arrogant that we think you can kind of topple some of the big English teams that have had that competitive edge for a long time. But we want to compete with them and, you know, push them all the way. And, you know, if we take a win and a big scal scalp, that would be um, a really big coup for, the, for this team up here. So um, I think... We've already raised a few eyebrows in the league already in terms of how we're playing, how relentless we're playing, how we won't give up, the mindset. And I think people have seen that shift. So we want to continue that for the whole 20 rounds this season um, and just get, just not dip in our performance over the course of the year. Hakaren agus an skipa gama maachal eith chonsan rítas haan ta yuk agachke a bia dasha cleich gspars fartbysach leis gavila duich a drasta mar a haae. We're very grateful. I think both we we feel a lot of responsibility for the netball community and the um, in turn, you know the club level netballers and coaches, um, the the school players, you know everyone who plays and loves the game. Um, we feel a lot of responsibility for to take this seriously and to perform at our very best. And I think you know there's been a lot of the Scottish and Sirens tribe commenting on social media about how excited they've been to watch the game. So that's great. Um, but I think for a lot of these girls it's just they I think they're excited to go to games because it is just something that other people aren't getting to do and it's a it's a, a little bit of a slice of normality for them in um, in these times when you know nothing there's not too many exciting things so yeah we're very privileged. Claire you must be delighted to have Karen on board. Yeah, she's absolutely amazing. Um, it's her second season with us. Um, and by goodness, am I delighted that, that we have her because having that steady leadership, that proven expertise, that ability to um, secure athletes when we've had injuries and, and um, train and develop players when actually you, you don't have a traditional training setup. Um, she's just brought so much to the table for us and, and it's paying off as we've seen with the results so far. And as she said, we've got a really tough season ahead. Uh, we're very realistic about what we think we can do, but what she's really delivering um, in these players is, is a sense of belief that they can go out there and compete. And um, she's working with all of our coaches. I mean, we've got one who's pregnant and, you know, Karen's based in England. We've got players in England. Nothing about this season has been straightforward or easy. Um, but she has stepped up and she has really taken ownership and leadership for what we're doing, um, as has Leslie McDonald, our head coach. And I just, for me, when you've got so much else that you're trying to figure out, as a chief exec of a national governing body, I sit on the Super League board, you know, I, we run Sirens, which is a huge brand and business, to feel confident in the likes of Karen leading that, that on-court piece um, has just made my life just that little bit easier. Is Karen somebody you had your eye on for a while to have her as part of your coaching team? Uh, so we, we knew that our previous coach, Gail, was coming to the end of what she felt she had had um, could do here in Scotland and she wanted to move home to New Zealand and she's got a fantastic new role now uh, leading a, an ANZ team and so you know it really when you've you've had somebody who's done such a good job for you it's really important that who comes in after that then enhances what's been done but also can bring something new and take it to a next level I knew that we were capable, we had a strong off-court brand, but on court we were really inconsistent and we never quite delivered against our potential. Um, and so, you know, I, I had a, a lot of different ideas about the approach I wanted to take, but ultimately when I spoke to Karen, who had won the Super League, who's one of the most respected and talented coaches in netball in the world, um, and asked her if she would want to, to get involved. I knew instantly she was the right person for us. Now she was living in Italy and she had two young children. So, you know, it, it wasn't straightforward, but I thought if I could use your expertise and I could get her to lead and direct the strategy and our recruitment and our training, and as she says, you know, actually strengthen the basics and the fundamentals that will allow us to start to compete better and more consistently. And I can channel that through our own talent which is where we brought Leslie McDonald in, who is so respected and, you know, our, our most capped player 
on the court, but Offit has been really developing her coaching skills. I thought that would help us to strengthen what we're doing as a club, but also strengthen and develop our own coaches because this has to be about sustainability and, and it has to be about success for Scotland ultimately as well. Um, so the fact that she moved back home to England this year is amazing <laughs> it could not i'm sure she's missing the sun at the moment in the heat of italy but everything just fell into place and um and she's just she's perfect for us well the evidence and the proof is there though with the recent wins three out of four like we were just saying at the start i mean that's the best start to a siren season ever ever i know <laughs> and i want it to keep going i want to win the next one and it's it's do you know it's amazing how good winning feels as well we're very good at taking the small wins and seeing the positives and how we perform we know that we're capable we've got some fantastic talented players we can challenge the top teams but consistent wins have eluded us and that was one of the main reasons why I wanted to bring Karen in to really settle us into knowing how to to, to drive out the win and getting the mindset um, but it just feels amazing and it feels amazing for my staff and for the team behind the team that that are turning up to sanitize and you know make sure that we're following all the regulations it's great for our fans who are sitting at home and just want to who love our team and will support them no matter what but are just celebrating with us and it's great for us as a brand and for women's sport because there's not a lot happening at the moment and right now i'm coming out and i've got my sport and my team broadcast we're reaching hundreds of thousands of people i'm signing major new contracts uh, partnerships and deals and we are winning and it's a real eye-opener head turner what's going on there and so we might not get this opportunity again we might not get to be able to make such a noise in what is normally a really noisy space for sport um, so we're, we're going to milk it and we're going to make the most of it um, and we're going to enjoy it absolutely well here's to the next win <laughs> and now Fleana H. Megan Briggs Anna McCook my skipper club golf Keel McCollum do you reckon that I'm not going to go to the Rain Megan Rain, see a quite a dash and a came in as Kutra Machina Driach Kukasha. Hoor klikt er golf al op nog Megan Briggs a marker of talent na tra eichke, nu de hoshiki klik, eik eus ook. My dad's side of the family is really big. My dad's the youngest of seven and I can't think of a family member that doesn't play sport or watch sport in some capacity. So um, yeah, I can't, I can't remember a time where we weren't playing or watching sport. And I think my dad took me to the practice grounds to try golf when I was about eight or nine and just seemed to take to it quite quickly. And I guess just the rest is history from there. I was aware that I was doing okay and that I was doing well at club and county level and I was I had such a good grounding from West Scotland girls and Remshire girls that I was always encouraged to try and go to the next level and do the next thing and I wanted to do that as well um, and I had my sister kind of snapping at my heels as well which does tend to push you on a little bit too. Ha caenach yn snoceg Megan i ddalop yr ochrych chi, y si ymiawr chi i'th na hamen yn sori chi, sydriach. I've played for Scotland at golf since I was about under 16 and I played under 16, under 18 and then full cap and so I played in Scottish girls teams and we won the home internationals twice and I played a number of Scottish ladies from internationals team and won that once and then I also was fortunate enough to be in a team that won a bronze medal at European team championships and playing in a Scotland team uh, together uh, vying for a trophy or a medal uh, with you know your friends and it's amazing and there's there's Winning by yourself is great, but a team win, there's nothing quite like it. And um, I don't think when I started playing golf, I necessarily thought, oh, I was going to be Scottish champion and playing all these Scotland teams. So now to look back on it, um, it's amazing. We, I had some fantastic weeks with my friends and, um, we had, you know, it's great memories celebrating as a team, um, wanting people to hit great shots and hold putts. And yeah, it's, a, it's an atmosphere that you can't, replicate unless you're you're in it and, and, and you've, you've been there. Bain Lava Megan is a crew of the people who are helping and 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 the people who
yeah, I mean, winning the Scottish Ladies Championship was, you know, my probably biggest individual achievement. Um, it was an amazing week, a week I will never forget. Um, my dad came for me and, um, yeah, it was fantastic. And, and now my name is on that trophy forever, along with other phenomenal Scottish female golfers. And I'm very fortunate uh, that that week was my week. It's a bit of an outer body experience, I think. Um, as I said, when you're playing, you don't get time to reflect. Uh, sometimes you don't, I find often you don't even get time to celebrate the wins because you're on to the next. And so it's almost after you finish playing that you really get the chance to think, do you know, that was really good. Um, and I was lucky enough, my sister played in the Curtis Cup for gb and I got to go to America and see her and, and being the person not playing and seeing her really does kind of put it all into perspective that these are amazing achievements and we've been very, very lucky. Uh, worked hard, but have been very lucky. Um, and it's something I'll, I'll seeing her playing and us playing in the same, same teams together and, you know, being fortunate to win tournaments, something I'll cherish uh, forever. Ha megan yn ish enemig tu mar skipper at club go kiel mcholam ers on davi le sagar ichet. Is i a gamas e rwyt gan a horse a club a hwg tor taichi na driach. I was asked uh, by the current captain to be his vice, so I'm vice captain this year and then I'll be captain next year. And I've been a member of Kilmacolm Golf Club since I think I was 14 or 15. So I've been there for, for quite some time now. And in that time, that's when all the kind of golfing things happened for me in terms of playing for Scotland and winning championships. And the membership at Kilmacolm have seen me right through from being a junior to winning, you know, Scottish championship to full caps and um, they supported me hugely and, and I don't know that I would have achieved it without all their support and, and, and good wishes and, and, and encouragement and so now to be their captain in 2022 it's a real achievement and, and, and something I, you know I take with a lot of pride and I take seriously um, and I'm really looking forward to it and it's a great club I really you know we want we've got this kind of one club theme going where men, women, juniors, we're all part of the same you know, club and ethos. And um, it's a really exciting time for the club. The year that I'll be captain, there'll be a, a female junior captain and then there'll be a ladies captain as well. So all three female captains. Um, we just put a studio in uh, the clubhouse, so kind of golf all year round. So there's really exciting things happening and and to be part of that, um, I'm really looking forward to. A game the band is seen as a good one of the Megan. There are so many sports out there for everyone to play and get involved in. But I think golf is one of those sports that you can play at any age and you can continue to play and develop. And that's one of the real selling points with golf. I think now you've got more women's golf on the TV. Um, the, even the outfits and everything that people wear is more modern. Clubs are coming around to being a bit more modern in terms of their dress codes or the tournaments they put on, the times people play. And all that lends itself to, to more women being involved. And I know that at Kilmacomb, we're going to start a kind of, we're hoping to start a kind of ladies academy, which will encourage uh, ladies to come and try golf and, and, and they'll get clubs to try that with and if, if they don't fancy it they can give those clubs back and if they do then the hope is that they, they'll keep them and, and they'll progress on and that's a really good taster uh, for perhaps um, women and girls that have never been involved in it before um, and hopefully um, with myself and others doing interviews and on social media and, and you know being captain and I, I was lucky enough to captain the under 18 girls Scotland team as well and um, so that all those things lend itself to, to getting girls and women's golf out there and uh, getting more people involved. Golf tends to have that um, reputation of perhaps taking a long time and being a bit boring and more boys than girls. And, um, you know, if someone isn't in your family that doesn't play, if someone isn't in your family that plays golf, maybe you wouldn't get involved. So there are all these organisations out there getting golf into schools. And I think for us, we're trying to be, you know, Kilmacomb is trying to be that club that then encourages people to take that to the next step and to join a golf club and, and keep going. Um, but of course, I mean, there could always be more that could be done. Uh, we're just trying to do our small bit. Claire, Megan is another great example of a woman in sport who's breaking these glass ceilings, which might not have even happened five years ago. Yeah, amazing. And do you know what? It sometimes... I get frustrated because we shouldn't have to do these things, but we are here and it takes women like Megan who can actually go out there and say, 
I'm going to choose to challenge what I see uh, and I want to change the game. And it really is about being proactive, solution focused, about being patient, about being resilient because she will have faced and will continue to face a number of challenges. But her conviction and her ambition to doing what's right and to changing the game for future generations. You know, she talks about her pathway, about being a young girl coming through and being capped. She knows that she's inspiring. She knows she's a role model. And she is using that to, to powerfully drive change and hopefully bring others with her and make it easier for them on their journey. So absolutely incredible. And um, yeah, it's women like her across every sport at the moment that are really making the difference. Well, like you say about choose to challenge, it's actually the slogan for this year's International Women's Day, which is coming up next week, the start of next week. What does that day mean to you? Do you like how I did that, by the I way? I loved it. Yeah, <laughs> just <laughs> segued in there. Yeah, ch choose to challenge means everything to me. I have never been more behind an International Women's Day um, campaign message. I'm not going to call it a hashtag or a slogan. It's a message. It's an action. It's a mindset and a movement. I've never been behind more behind it than I am this one because this is who I am and it embodies what I believe. And just as I was saying there about Megan, we've got to take everything that doesn't work or that we want to change and we've got to do something about it but that starts with choosing to challenge it's about awareness it's about understanding where things aren't equitable or there's no parity or there isn't fairness or justice and and there's lots of that in women's sport you know international women's day covers every single area of life and society but for us here in sport you know we talk often about the lack of visibility the lack of media coverage in front and back of, of of newspapers digitally and on tv we talk about the lack of investment commercial investment leadership participation there is gender gap everywhere so choose to challenge for me is about recognizing what those challenges and barriers are and then saying what can I do about this because we can't just talk about it we can't just moan about it we can't just look at it and say I don't like what I'm seeing because nothing changes that way we have to say I'm going to challenge this and we can do that with our voices we can do by pointing out things that aren't right we can do it by showing up as women turn on the TV, you know, click on the links, follow the clubs, even if you're not necessarily into that sport, follow the players, the clubs, the sports, the athletes, buy the tickets when we can eventually get back into stadiums and arenas. But choosing to challenge for me is a, is a real call to arms about driving change that's necessary. And after the year we've had, We've shown that we are now a global society that isn't prepared to accept the status quo. We're not prepared to accept the norm. We're not prepared to accept inequalities. We are a society now that wants to speak up and drive forward to make things better and fairer and brighter for ourselves, but more importantly, for future generations. And I really hope that every industry, every woman and every male ally, every person gets behind International Women's Day message and starts to drive towards this better, fairer future. Well, you and I, Claire, we work in sport and we see it every day. Do you think enough people out with women's sport understand why they need to support this message? I don't know. Um, I know that at the moment, the majority um, of people are just trying to survive. They're trying to get through a day of not seeing friends and family, monotony, poor mental health, money worries, work worries. We're all trying to survive. Um, but what happens when habits form? So the world that we live in is, is a bunch of habits that have been formed. When a habit forms, you stop challenging it. So sometimes we don't even know or aren't aware of things that should be better because it's just not in our conscious. And I think a lot of what we've seen this year, particularly through the Black Lives Matters movement, is it's it's not okay to say, well, I didn't know anymore. We've got to go and do the work. We've got to seek things out. And then we've got to educate ourselves on how we can be part of the solution. And that's everybody. So every sports editor right now, look at your content and know that if it does not feature women, disability sports, minority sports, you know, then, then you need to do better. If, 
if your sponsorship is all being invested into male sports and games, then change it and do better. If your board is not um, diverse and inclusive, then change it. But what we have to do is wake up, look around, look at ourselves and then say, what small or big thing can I do that is going to drive this shift change? Because the world would be a better place. This isn't just about women coming out saying, give us more. This is about really driving a thriving, successful society because everyone is considered, everyone is represented. And that can start today. Oh, it's great, Claire. Well, thank you so much. I feel so inspired after just listening to you. My pleasure. <laughs> thank you for joining us again on thank 360. You. Well, Shanae is on program Ailey. Kaidika Kashina Torshuka program Ura Hula Shakin, Smarsha and Jenkin Shakavel Shiver Lentil, our YouTube, Agus Kuchakan program Magiri Gakin, our BBC iPlayer. We had that soon being doll and a sales force in the band, Bishina Brain again and Shaw, our three Shaskit. Marsha and Live and Drass.